Hey guys, welcome to the Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton, and as always, we have a cool show for you. Well, it's week six in the NFL, and there's so much to unpack over the next 30 minutes. And joining us today to get his perspective, taking a look back at week five and a look ahead to week six. Well, check this out, guys. He was regarded as the elite left tackle in the NFL during his seven-year career all with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was the leader of the Jags team that reached the AFC Championship game in just the franchise's second season. That's right, and in that same year, marked the first of four straight playoff appearances as the Jacksonville Jaguars posted regular season records of nine and seven. 11 and 5, 11 and 5, and 14 and 2 from 1996 to 1999. Well, it's my honor to welcome the pride of Duval. That's right, right here in the building we have from the class of 2022, Mr. Tony Faselli joining us right here on the mission. When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. What's happening, Tony, man? Welcome to the Mission Podcast. I appreciate you so much for giving us your time, man. You're out on the West Coast, San Francisco time. We're here on the East Coast. So, man, it's 935 here. So it's 630. Yeah, I appreciate you giving us your time this morning. How you been, man? I'm good. The good news is I just stay on. I, I typically just stay on East Coast time when I'm on the West Coast. So it's not too bad when I go back home. So this is no problem. It's great to be with you this morning. Well, Tony, not only are we going to take a look back at week five, it's week six of the NFL. I just want to get your perspective. Um, we're going to go through some new segments that we have. Well, they're really not new, but they're new for you. We have a Hall of Famer hot seat segment as well as a Hall of Famer NFL player watch list. But before we jump into all of that, this past Sunday, Texans, Jaguars in front of Jacksonville faithful you receive the last icon of what it makes up a Pro Football Hall of Famer, your ring of excellence. Talk about receiving that ring in front of all of Duval County, man. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, it was, uh, the way I looked at it, it was my chance to celebrate with the fans. Now, thankfully, a bunch of fans came up to Canton. I mean, I think Jaguars were representing Canton Hall of Fame weekend, but not everyone come. So it was, um, it's been an amazing year. I mean, it started in February. We're sitting here in October. And to kind of cap it off, getting the ring at halftime with all the Jaguar fans and uh, and at the same time, the uh, uh, Shad Khan, the Jaguar's owner, and the organization retired my number. One, two, three. Duval! Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, your Jacksonville Jaguars Hall of Famer, Tony Vaselli. Um, as well. And so it was just, it was a really cool event. It's been, um, you know, the Jaguars have been really great during this whole process. I mean, the ownership, you know, they, he, Chad wasn't the owner when I played, right. uh, but you would not know that. I mean, he, you know, he is all in. It's about the organization. It's about me. It's about, you know, um, really being so supportive to me and my family. So that was, it was a lot of fun and having, Having Jim down there and, and Anthony uh, coming down to be with me, you know, Anthony's my guy. I mean, just having him there makes it even more uh, special for me. So it is. It's uh, it just capped off an amazing, amazing year. I mean, it's, it's funny. Some of my friends are like, "Okay, can we stop celebrating you?" It's like <laughs> I've had enough of going to parties where you're like the center of attention. I said, "I agree. Let's celebrate somebody else." But it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Well, your lovely wife, your best half, received her pennant as well. What was that moment like for her? Your brain, and I'm going to let your wonderful husband put that on. Honey, I have a 71 number, and it's different. I wish I had my glasses. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Yeah, that was a surprise. I didn't know that was happening until it did. And uh, she was in tears. I think it meant a lot to her because I think sometimes, 
you know, your better half, you know, it's kind of long for the ride and they're behind the scenes. And, and I know for me, and I know for probably a lot of guys, I mean, she was critical in my, uh, in my career, um, all the way back at SC, we were just dating, but her support there. And then when we got, we were married the whole time I was in the NFL, you know, and having kids and there's a lot of responsibilities that I just wasn't very, I wasn't, I, I guess I was around, but I wasn't really paying attention to all the work that she had to do. Um, so that I could focus on football. And so we really, I really view this and, and I know she's the same way. This is kind of for both of us and for the hall of fame to do that, to include her and to make her feel really special. Um, it might've been one of my favorite moments of this whole thing. And uh, she was blown away and it was really a cool moment for both of us. And I was really happy uh, for her because it made her feel, um, she, she knows how I feel about her and that it's, she's a part of the process, but for the hall of fame to recognize that is uh, big time. Man, that's a beautiful thing. You know, it's like they say the three iconic symbols, that of your bronze bus, your gold jacket, and your ring of excellence. But for me, I like to take it a step further because without that illustrious career, you wouldn't be here. And I go back and I look at these numbers, 1995, first round, second pick. Talk about those numbers and how it meant to you because that was the journey back then of being drafted during that time tackle from University of Southern California, Tony Vaselli. From the time he was drafted, there was never any doubt the guy was going to be great. Yeah, I mean, I don't ever I'll be honest with you, more than anything, I just wanted to make sure I didn't screw it up. You know, I was the first pick of the franchise, and, uh, you know, I had a lot of pride in, like, felt there was pressure because I felt like, okay, this organization is picking a left tackle. I mean, not the sexiest pick, let's be honest. I mean, like, I'm sure the fans were like, hey, where's the quarterback or the running back or, like, the defensive end, someone sacks the quarterback. But, no, they went with the kid all the way from California, um, the block people for a living. And so when I showed up, I said, okay, I got to make sure I pay this off for them. And so that was always my thought. I mean, I, I, I obviously – I hold myself to the highest standard, so I wanted to do right by myself and my family. But I also – the day I got picked, I felt it, the pressure of saying, okay – this, this franchise, this organization, this ownership group, this co the coaching staff, they're trusting me to come in there and perform at a really high level. And so um, it was great. I loved being part of kind of setting the foundation, setting the tradition um, of the organization. Um, it, was, it was quite an honor. And it's something that I, I've taken seriously my entire career and post-career. Like, I feel like I, I represent, I represent uh, my family. I represent my fa uh, uh, family, my family, my friends, obviously my faith. Um, I, I represent uh, Jesus, but I also represent the city and the organization. Um, and so those are all really important to me. And uh, and so it started in 95. It keeps going. Um, but last Sunday was a big moment. And I know the fans were proud and uh, were excited uh, for me. Well, Tony, let's talk a little shop before we look ahead to week six. Let's just take a look back at week five and get your perspective. What caught your attention? Uh, what did you like about week five? What are some of your takeaways? Well, I'll be honest with you. This was the, the least football I watched all week. I was too busy uh, <laughs> celebrating and having a good time with all the friends and family. You know, usually I'm working the game, calling the game for the Jaguars. And it was the first time I didn't call a game for a long time. Um, and so the, the worst thing was the Jags lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a bummer. Uh, and it was, a, you know, I wanted them to win really bad for not even about the, the ring ceremony or about me, just because this organization is trying to turn it around and Doug Peterson's doing a great job. You got a young quarterback and Trevor Lawrence. So I was really, man, I wanted it bad for those guys. I wanted them to get that win. Um, I think overall across the league, what's jumping out is, is you're seeing a, not as much scoring maybe as we've expected or we've seen in the past couple of years with all the rule changes. And it, and I'll take, I'll steal a line from the great Tom Brady who said, you know, they, they asked him last week and I, I agree with 100%. There's a lot of bad football out there right now. <laughs> it's not, I mean, I, I'm a big believer. Like this is a game you have to practice and with how they handle camp now and nobody really playing the preseason games and limited time on the practice field, you get to the regular season. Boy, it just feels like guys aren't, in sync and teams right. are struggling to get going. So hopefully that'll change. Cause I don't, you know, it's been some sloppy games. Now last night was a great game that uh, the other side of the coin was the Raiders chiefs game was outstanding last night. Um, which brings me to the other thing that's is jumping out. Boy, coaches are making some strange decisions. I mean, analytics has changed the game. 
It mm-hmm. really has. And you saw that last night when Josh McDaniels had a chance to kick the extra point and tie it up. Right. He goes for two, doesn't get the, get it, and ends up losing by one. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, 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 it's just really interesting how analytics have come in, which those are important. I get it. It's part of the game, and we should use all the information you can to make good good decisions. But sometimes I, I just shake my head. Maybe I'm too old school or too caught back up in the past, but kick the extra point, go play defense, and hopefully you get the ball back. And if not, go to overtime and try to win it there. So I think those are the, some of the things that really jumped out early in the season. You no, know, Tony, it's funny that you mentioned that because two weeks ago we spoke to Marshall Falk, and he spoke to your point how, you know what, you know, three, four weeks of football, we played it. Now, guys, training camp is over almost, so now we can get back into the rhythm. Can you speak to the fact that the football that you played post to the football that you're seeing now? Yeah, I mean, it's just – I mean, Marshall's right. I mean, when Marshall and I played, you had four weeks of camp. Guys played in the preseason. I mean, by the time you got to opening day, you've played a lot of football. And, like, your body's ready. You're, you're in rhythm with your, your, your teammates. You understand what you're trying to do. Um, and now that it's just changed so much. So it's almost like they got to play their way. I wouldn't, they're in great shape because guys train year round, but they got to play their way into football shape. They got to play their way into, you know, being ready for regular season, the speed of the game and everything else, where I think we were probably more, we were more ready. We were ready earlier. We were more ready. And, uh, and I think you're seeing that right now. Um, so I expect some really good football coming the rest of October throughout the rest of the season. It's, you know, there's still it's still a great game. It's it's still so entertaining and um but you can I I definitely agree with Marshall. I see the difference um early in the season because of the lack of training camp, the lack of guys playing in the preseason. Well, there's going to be so many games played, but let's talk about two of them. Sunday night football. Them boys travel to the city of brotherly love to face the undefeated team thus far. The 5-0 and Fly Eagles Fly. They're going to try to go in there and deliver their first L. Talk about this matchup, Tony. Well, I mean, you look at the NFC East. There was a laughing stock of football last year. I mean, you know, it was like, who's going to by default win? <laughs> um, and this year they got the Eagles five and zero. You got the Cowboys at four and one, and and you got the Giants at four and one. I mean, mm-hmm. three good football teams. And uh, hats off to the Cowboys because they lose Dak Prescott week one, and here comes Cooper Rush. And I think everyone, me included, thought, well, there goes their season. It's over. And th- that behind that defense and solid quarterback play, they've run four games off in a row. And uh, you know that's not easy to do, and and so you can tell that Mike McCarthy and, and that coaching staff and that team is a close team. It's a complete team. It's not about one guy, but they have a tough matchup because they're going up to Philly against a boy, a red hot Eagles team, and and Jalen Hurts is playing really good football. You know, in his third year, you can see him maturing. He's becoming that franchise quarterback. He's a run pass threat. Um, and I think what I love about that offense more than anything, they have the weapons outside. They got Jalen Hurts, but boy, they're really good up front. Um, Jason Kelsey's, I think, the best center in all football. And mm. you want if you love offensive line play, go find an all twenty-two and go watch tape of Jason Kelsey. The cat can just flat play, and uh, and so he's fun to watch. Lane Johnson's the best right tackle in football. Um, he's another great player. So they got a really strong foundation up front that allows them to do a lot of different things. And then that once they get a lead, that defense can unleash the pass rush and and they get after people. So that's going to be a really good matchup. And I think it's going to be the Eagles' biggest test because of how well um, that, that Cowboy defense is playing behind Micah Parsons. Monday night, Denver travels to L.A. to face the Chargers. What do you like about this matchup? Well, I don't like much for the for the Broncos. They can't score points, which is shocking to me. You know, they spent all that money and uh, traded players to get Russell Wilson. You have Nathaniel Hackett, new coach. I know Nathaniel. He was in Jacksonville. I have a lot of respect for him. He's a good offensive mind. It doesn't make sense to me. They can't score. Mm-hmm. Um, but they better figure it out because Justin Herbert and that offense can put points on the board. And I think that's a tough matchup for the Broncos. Now, they're playing good defense, so that defense will give them a chance. But they're going to have to figure out their – offensive woes and with Russell sounds like he has an oblique or some lat problem or whatever uh, on his throwing side uh, on the throwing side of uh, his right side so um, I, I like the Chargers in that game probably more than the Broncos just because they haven't figured out off what they're doing offensively yet 
All right, Tony, well, let's jump into our Hall of Famer NFL player watch list. This is brought to you by the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Book your trip today to Canton, Ohio, and visit ProFootballHOF.com for your ticket information. Well, Tony, this is a segment where you tell us the players that you're watching. You know here at the Hall, we have the Pro Football Hall of Fame Today Gallery where we celebrate the excellence of these young men that are making an impact on the league, as well as ladies who are coaching. Their artifacts are here in Canton, Ohio, as well, along beside you and your fellow brothers. But who are some of the players that Tony Baselli is watching and you're keying in on? Well, it always starts with me with the Jaguars because I, I watch them and call them every week. And, uh, you know, the guy I can't help but pay attention to is, is Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he's mm -hmm. a young quarterback, um, had a really – bumpy rookie year because of the the mess that was the, or, the organization was in with urban meyer it just was a bad situation now doug peterson you can see him growing and becoming the quarterback um that why they drafted him the number one overall and i'm a big believer in him and he's had a couple tough weeks but i'm i'm watching for him to rebound they have a big game against the colts um they they're right there in the midst of the afc south which is not that strong a division so Obviously, I watch him every week, pay a lot of attention. And then I think the other one that I, I'm looking forward to watch on the national uh, stage is Micah Parsons, the the great the great all-around defensive player. And I like watching guys like that because I always imagine, okay, how would I block him? Like, what would be my game plan and what would I try to do to take away? Because he's so dynamic and he's, right. he's an every-down player. So I'm looking forward to turning on the TV and just checking that dude out because, boy, he's fun to watch. Now – if you're an if you're an offensive tackle or a quarterback, he's probably not a lot of fun to watch. But now that I'm retired and I'm sitting on the sideline, I can enjoy and appreciate uh, and kind of think in my mind how would I attack a guy like that because he's special. Wow. Well, there it is. Tony Baselli's Hall of Famer player NFL watch list. Well, Tony, you know, going through your bio, I know you had the Tony Baselli Foundation. I just want to change gears a bit. Talk about your mission statement and some of the things that you're doing to impact your community. Yeah, it, you know, it's really my, it's my wife and I. I mean, I, she's included in everything. She's really was the one that when I was young playing, we kicked it off. She drove the whole thing. Mm. I mean, she was she was the engine behind it. Um, she was, she kind of drug me along because, you know, I was focused on other things and, but post-retirement, it's really been a great teamwork. We focus on um, education and character development. Um, we've done that in various ways. We've had after school programs, we've given scholarships away. Um, and right now where we're really focusing and is in two main areas is uh, we're actually have a teacher fellowship program. Um, we're trying to, one of the things that I know in Jacksonville, there's a shortage of teachers and there's too much teacher turnover, especially in the, uh, in, in some of the lower income neighborhoods. And that's just not right. Um, and so we are, we are focusing dollars and resources to train those teachers, um, to give them the support, um, the professional tr uh, further training. Uh, we have a great curriculum that we work with them um, so they can go into the classroom and make an impact in young people's lives. And we, it's been great. We've been doing it three years now where the turnover rate in teachers, especially in those lower income neighborhoods is really high. Um, we've seen our teachers stick with it and stay in the game and keep going. So that's one area. And then the second, we're working with young men in, uh, in detention uh, centers, uh, juvenile detention centers. And it's, it's, it's a mentorship program. We focus on uh, character development, giving them the tools that when they get out, um, that they can go make a positive impact in, in their community. It, it's that, I'm really passionate about that because, listen, young people make dumb choices. And these aren't bad guys. Right. They're not bad individuals. They made bad choices. A lot of them came from really tough uh, family situations and, and, and tough upbringing. And I just spent some time with a, a number of them the other night. And you sit there and listen to their stories. I mean, these are young men that want to make it. They want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And they just need some mentorship. They need someone to come around them and help them. So uh, we're focused in uh, our efforts and in, in building up uh, a bunch of mentors that can go in. We have a really good curriculum. Our executive director, Jen Barachoff, has put together um, to go work with those young men in, in those situations. That's amazing, Tony. I salute you and your wife. That's some awesome work. Well, before we let you go, we got to have some fun, man. This is one of our segments, the Hall of Famer Hot Seat. This is brought to you by the Hall of Fame Merchandise Shop. All 32 teams and Hall of Fame swag. That's right, the Hall of Fame Merchandise Store where you can shop for all 32 teams 
and get your Hall of Fame swag. And also, too, while you're visiting ProFootballHOF.com, why don't you put in that mission code M-I-S-S-I-O-N and receive 25% off. All right, Tony, let's jump right into it. These are one-word answers, and you can get them also, too, in three to five seconds. Which running back in today's game would you have loved to block for? I think it's got to be Derrick Henry, man. I mean, Derrick Henry, I mean, he's as big as I am, so it would be fun to go, like, open up holes and watch that guy go to work. Toughest road game environment that you ever had to play in? Um, it, it would have it would either be Buffalo or Denver in the playoffs. Um, Old Mile High, that place to be shaken, and those Buffalo fans, you can't even hear yourself think uh, when it's a big game. When you're packing your travel bag, what is that one must thing that you have to have when you hit the road? Gotta have a toothbrush. Gotta have a toothbrush. <laughs> Gotta keep the mouth clean, man. <laughs> Nike, Reebok, or Adidas? I'm a Nike guy. I've always been a Nike guy. Are you playing with sleeves or are you playing without sleeves? Never worn sleeves one day in my life. Uh, it was minus degrees in Cincinnati. Wind chill was like minus 10. No sleeves, never. Which fast food restaurant has the best fries and burgers? Come on, Mickey D's, man, McDonald's. There's, there's no, I mean, that's an easy one. Now, Tony, I got to ask you, though, what is the secret in order to get fresh fries when ordering your French fries? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I eat there a lot growing up. Just make sure you get there and like stand back and wait for the fresh batch to come out and then get up to the front of the line. Nah, I got to drop a jewel on you. You order them with no salt. Oh. See, and you are guaranteed to get a fresh batch of french fries. I like salt though. I guess you can put it on yourself. Which is your favorite pizza topping? Your favorite pizza topping? I'm, I'm, uh, I go either pepperoni or sausage. Either one of those I'm good with. And lastly, which superhero would you be and why? That's a good one. I'm going to go Superman because he can do it all. Oh, my God. You, Anthony Munoz, and Marshall Falk. Marshall wants to fly. Anthony wants to wear the nice suit and then the glasses and then turn into Superman. And you? Dude, I just want to be, because he can do it all. There's nothing he can't do. He's fast. He can fly. He's strong. He can shoot lasers out of his eyes. I mean, as long as you stay away from the kryptonite, no one can touch you. I mean, you're unstoppable. Well, there it is, man. Tony, thank you so much for giving us your time this morning to join us right here on The Mission. Thanks for having me, man.